Hey, what's up? What's up, everyone? This is your boy Jay, and I am back with another video for you guys today. And it's been a while since I did a reaction video too. When it comes to with this, you know, channel too, it was just dedicated to self care and wellness. And this could really just, you know, relate to with relationships and you know, self care, spirituality too, and current events also. When it comes to that. So when it comes to with this video, especially when it comes to reaction video too, that we're going to, you know, watch with me too, when it comes to Teal Swan. And I believe it's, you know, um, when it comes to Teal Swan, she really made another video about, you know, um, when it comes to with polyamory, I'm going to see what the title of it too. So she's made a video about what you need to know before trying polyamory too. So that's the title of it too when it comes to with this video too. I know I probably should have remembered that in the top of my head, but you know, sometimes, you know, we're human too. And you know, when it comes to that, but usually I don't forget things. But other than that too, you know, you know, it's not talking about me right now too. So <clears throat> when it comes to that also, especially when it comes to with this video too, you know, what you should know before trying polyamory too, you know, I really did another, um, Reaction video too by Teal Spawn talking about this similar topic too, and, you know, when it comes to with, you know, her content as well. And I'll make sure to post a video of that reaction video too, so you guys want to just watch that also too, when it comes to that. And also the original video too by Teal Swan as well. So shout out to her. All credit goes to her too, when it comes to the reaction video that we're reacting to. All credit goes to Teal Spawn also. If you, I know. You know, I don't know how you guys feel about her too. I think she's cool. She's gorgeous. You know, I have nothing against her too in the spiritual community. I know some people will probably feel a different way too, which is totally fine. You guys your opinion as well. So when it comes to that, but when it comes to the topic of relationships, especially when it comes to polyamory, monogamy too, or any kind of relationships too, you know, uh, when it comes to that, you're more than welcome to share your own feelings and thoughts about what we're reacting to, how you feel about polyamory or monogamy too, when it comes to relationships. And we're going to be pausing at bits and pieces too. So we're going to react to what she's, you know, Teal Spawn's talking about. And when it comes to her, you know, talking points and key points, you know, notes that she's, you know, mentioning in this video too. So without further ado, we're just going to get on with it too when it comes to this video so without further ado let's get this party started too you know cheers to you guys also if you have your drinks and popcorn ready you know you're more than welcome to do so or kombuchas of mushroom elixirs for those who are in the what spiritual and self-care and wellness communities too and here we go so Let's do this. Lately, it, especially within the newer oh, generations, polyamory is becoming a much more common practice, a much more common relationship structure. What is polyamory? Literally translated, it means many love. Most of the time, this implies having intentional, intimate, emotional, and or romantic, and or sexual relationships with more than one partner at the same time. This being the case, all relationships in the individual's life are technically open. There are many forms of polyamory, and each one of these forms comes with its own unique sets of upsides and downsides, but in today's episode, we're going to look at some of the main upsides and downsides, gifts and challenges of polyamory in general. Good stuff. That's good. First, let's start with the downsides or challenges of polyamory. One, polyamory does not get you away from relationship dysfunction. No matter what relationship arrangement you happen to be engaged in, you are still dealing with people. And, you know, since we're stopping at what the key point, what she's talking about too, and it's just like when it comes to polyamory, and I've been, you know, um, doing a lot of research and exploring this kind of, you know, relationship dynamic because I'm a very open and adventurous person when it comes to my relationships it's just like when it comes to that with polyamory also you really got to make sure that you really like people involved and especially yourself are really okay with it too especially when it comes to dealing with jealousy you know seeing other partners too like you know back and forth i mean it's just like you know when it comes to polyamory or any kind of polyamorous relationships too if you're a swinger if you're just like your open relationships too, however you want to call it as well. And so 
when it comes to that, you you know, when it comes to these kind of relationship dynamics, you really gotta be secure with yourself and especially with other people too, you know, as well. And just really being honest with anyone who's involved in it too, just to really have that open communication about it too when it comes to with these kind of relationship dynamics. Because I can speak from experience as being in that kind of, you know, in those relationships and knowing people who have been exploring those kind of relationships and still practicing that in their own way too. So no shade against them too. If the, any, if that makes you happy when it comes to, you know, with the, any kind of polyamorous relationships too. Even if, you know, there's a new uh, term now too, is monogamous swingers. I, I, sometimes, you know, when it comes to talk with my friends who are really, you know, passionate about this, when it comes to these relationship dynamics, you can't keep, you, you can't keep up. It's like, what the fuck? How can I, you know, keep up with the, you know, the time too? So it's kind of like, oh shit, like, it made me think about it. It's just like, yo, I mean, I just go back to just really being, you know, monog monogamous with my partner, but if she wants to, just, you know, like have a good time with, you know, say she wants a girlfriend or another, I say a man per se too, you know, I just really got it, you know, you know, go have a talk about it, you know, the ups and downs with it too and all that as well. So anyways, I'm just putting my business out there too. I'm, should, I probably shouldn't do that too, just because I want to just protect myself. But anyways, I'll just shut the fuck up and let's just get back into the video too. So here we go. Oh, this means you'll still be dealing with things like incompatibility and with people's relationship opposing patterns. Two, you cannot undo thousands of years worth of programming for monogamous relationships. Um, I don't know about that. I mean, that really makes sense too when it comes to the programming that we've been raised by when it comes to our parents and grandparents too because, you know, those values are instilled within them within us from an early age too, um, especially when it comes to how we treat people, especially if we want to be in a relationship with them. We get to like a certain age in our lives too, whether we're in our early 20s, you know, in our 30s too, especially as well. So how I was raised too, I mean, it's just like I was raised to just really, you know, treat people how they want to be treated too, treat them with, you know, courtesy, respect, kindness, especially if I'm in an intimate relationship with the you know, the opposite sex too, you know, so when it comes to that, and if people want to just really want to explore something new in their relationships, I believe like people can just really change too, if they really want to just, you know, explore a kind of new relationship dynamic, especially for, especially with anyone who really feels comfortable, you know, in the same way too as them, and they just want to just explore that, you know, for themselves, especially in their own lives too, because it's none of my business how you guys want to you know, I say, you know, when it comes to with relationships, so it's like, hey, wherever that floats your boat, when it comes to healthy adults, you know, with intimacy, with sex and love and all that good stuff too. And, you know, if people want to change too, you know, when it comes to with their relationship dynamics and, you know, really doing that from a healthy space, you know, I have to disagree with Teal here, just respectfully, you know, and, you know, it's like when it comes to that, but at the same time as well, you know, she has a point there too, so. But you never know. I mean, I could be totally wrong about this shit. So anyways, let's get back to it. And therefore, the issues that programming creates when trying to live a polyamorous lifestyle. To give you just two examples, uh, let's say we've been completely programmed into our self-esteem being about being chosen by someone to be their one and only. This makes it so that even when we choose a polyamorous lifestyle, we will experience a self-esteem dip when someone chooses more than just us. Yeah, that's a good point, you know, and it's just like, you know, in monogamous relationships, what's the most awesome thing about monogamous relationships is just really being present with your partner, just really doing stuff with them, always being there for them too when it comes to that as well. And it's just like, there's nothing wrong with that too, you know, especially if you want to just, you know, have a partner that you can really connect with and just like have a good time, have sex, you know, do some freaky stuff too, if you're into BDSM or just like <laughs> when it comes to that, I'm just showing my ass off right here right now too. So um, when it comes to that, but, you know, at the same time, you know, Teal makes a good point just because, you know, yeah, because sometimes humans too, and I'm just really being, I'm saying humans, you know, being gender neutral when it comes to men and women, 
whether you're straight, if you're gay, if you identify yourself in the LGBTQ community too, when it comes to that. And it's just like, you know, sometimes if you see, you know, like in a polyamorous relationship, you know, with your partner with someone else, when it comes to with another man or another woman too, especially with guys as well, because, you know, us black men are very territorial as a motherfucker. And if we see our lady with another man, especially if another black man too, you know, we'd be like, hey, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, what's up? You know, and, you know, shit could really get pop off real quick too. I'm just speaking from my own experience, just seeing brothers just being that way. But, you know, most people are kind of, you know, comfortable in your own skin, just letting your other part, uh, partners being with other people, especially if it's romantic, if it's just like with friendships too. So, you know, so it can really just be a, like the, like the, Achilles heel or the kryptonite too in any relationships, but also it could really be, you know, you know, um, I don't know how I can say it, the frosting on the cake, we say too. I don't know what the in a terminology to simulate, you know, explain that also. So um, feel free to comment too, you know, if you guys know what I'm talking about, if you guys disagree or, or agree with that too. But, you know, when it comes to, you know, with, you know, with our self esteem, especially if you see other partner, you know, our partners being with other people, especially when it comes to an intimate, an intimate way too, in the polyamory, uh, polyamorous play, uh, relationships too, you know, it can really just, you know, it can really spark some stuff too, like jealousy and all that too. It can make us feel, you know, insecure, self-conscious, you know, and sometimes we'll probably do some, you know, dumb shit too, if we, you know, do that. I don't condone that too, just letting you guys know for those who are watching this video. So, yeah. Um, anyways, let's get back into it too. Let's explore. We got a couple more minutes here. We're just still a minute. <laughs> so, or, for example, we've been programmed to believe that we only have relationship security when we're someone's only sexual partner. Exclusivity mm -hmm. is currently what we base our security on. Exclusivity is what people derive a sense of significance. Oh, by the way, not to get off topic, but Teal looking good in that outfit, though. I'm going to say she looks like a modern day Xena, the warrior princess. So I'll just leave it at that. And that's why I get those, that kind of vibe from her, too. She reminds me of a modern day Xena, the warrior princess without the armor, the gear. You know, she's got the hair down lock, too. So, you know, Teal, if you're watching this, I'm saying this respectfully, too. You look like the modern day Xena, the warrior princess, and much love to you, too. So. You know, people, if I get heat from that also, so read it. I'm just going to be a man enough to admit it to. I'll even say this to your face as well. So, hey, you know, much love to you. And I'm going to get back into the topic. I'm just being a thirsty motherfucker. So, <laughs> you know, if, since I'm being thirsty, cheers. I got my water with me too. <laughs> so, here we go. Let's do this. This is a specialness from. The very structure of monogamy is what we have built our relationship security on. So even when you choose a polyamorous lifestyle, you will experience deep insecurity. Being polyamorous means working on every single layer of programming so as to feel good mm -hmm. and feel secure in a structure that we have been programmed to believe is completely insecure <laughs> and even bad and wrong. This means polyamory implies constant self-work. And the reality is that this social programming for monogamy can make polyamory so hard and so painful that it is easier and even preferable for people to simply go back into the monogamous structure of relationship. It's something that we are now rewired for, and it's a structure that we understand. Three, we live in a mononormative world. Society doesn't immediately change with the times. Human society is currently based on monogamous relationship. Yep. That is totally true. And it's just like nowadays too, especially as we're going to in, going to the 21st century. And I think at the 20th century too. <laughs> I got to get with the times also. So when it comes to with the younger generations, just being in any kind of like different relationship dynamics from those that we experienced in the past too, with monogamy, if you know, people want to explore monogamy with one partner too. That is totally their choice too, especially when it comes to with, you know, upcoming adults, if they're in their early 20s, <clears throat> excuse me, in their 30s and all that stuff too. So it's kind of like, hey, you know, I just want to be with one partner. I just want to find that, you know, special someone that you want to just, you know, grow with, to have a family, to, you know, build a business with too, whatever that floats your boat. Or if you just want to be in the 
polyamorous uh, relationship if you're like in your know, swingers if you like to have fun if you want to just you know do some spicy stuff too when it comes to having those fun adventures with your partner too and really being comfortable with that too just with your partner being with other people and vice versa too if it's like another, with another man if another woman etc too just really you know being really honest with ourselves too to really just wanting that also for ourselves too and just really owning that as well so that's i'm just going to say it too for my own opinion you guys can disagree and here we go i was going to let teal talk instead of me so monogamy is assumed choosing multiple partners is still seen as immoral and this mononormative mentality creates tons and tons of pain mm. there could be real consequences for deciding to live a polyamorous lifestyle things like conflict pain and loss of relationships with people and groups who don't support it mm. uh, being treated like a threat being legally unprotected being unable to legally marry more than one partner uh, non-monogamy being considered adultery right, right, right. in many places regardless of whether it is consensual or not which by the way comes with some very serious ramifications some other things are people not acknowledging or recognizing the significance of a breakup or a death that you experience with a partner because you have other partners. Um, home denials and evictions and other mm. home related issues. Why? Because houses and housing laws are built around the nuclear family and around monogamy. Uh, how about getting fired or experiencing career challenges because of it? Custody battles, being unable to bring more than one uh, partner to social functions and events, especially when they're really important. It's a big problem. Risking your social status, medical discrimination, being denied access to partners in hospital settings, no longer seeing yourself represented in culture. Mm. Now, the reality is that all of this can create a sense of being separated from society, being marginalized, uh, not belonging, being unsafe, being alone with no one to turn to, and of course, this feeling that other people are against you. Yeah. I mean, if that happened to anyone, that's going to that really suck just because you're being ostracized from society if you live a certain kind of relationship, you know, lifestyle too. And it's just like, and this is just my own experience because I'm in Southern California and we're very kind of, you know, um, what's the word, accepting when it comes to with being, you know, not only with, you know, other people from different cultures, but also with relationship dynamics too. But, you know, what Teal said here, too, just like for just the last few, you know, minutes as well is, you know, she's really, you know, spot on about it just because, you know, um, I know, like, you know, for the times that I told people that I'm a very open minded person, I got a lot of shit from it, too. And, you know, people kind of I lost a friendship, too, basically recently when it comes to that, just sharing something, you know, really intimate, too. And it wasn't even about her. It was just like spare the moment just like when it comes to sharing because i'm a very artistic and expressive person so when it comes to that you know it's unfortunate that happened you know but you know um i'm just gonna knock a bit of you know long story short too it was just like i had you know the friendship ended you know i had to just you know cut ties with her just because you know she did something to me that was just you know putting my business out there too without my consent and you know i just had to you know put the brakes on it you know block her and just like you know when it comes to that but basically when it comes to what i'm about to you know talk about too in this video excuse me for my background noise that's my family right there you know just with my sister and my niece but um it's just like when it comes to being ostracized especially when it comes to you know practicing polyamory kind of lifestyle and relationship dynamics to anyone who's involved in it too with you and another person another man another woman too it's just like you know it you know the downside of that is just like you will possibly will be just be ostracized from you know certain people too especially you know in you know certain places too so just like a what teal said too with the downside of it too it's really good to be mindful of that as well but you know if you guys don't have to listen to me say this too i'm just sharing my own opinions here too and you know um just experience from it too so I'm going to get back, we're going to get back into this video also, and here we go. Four, it increases the complexity of your relationship life. Polyamory is a very intense lifestyle that can become very time consuming. There's nothing simple about polyamory. The things that you would do with one person to make one relationship work, you need to do with several people. Yeah, and just like, you know, 
and that really just you know if you had to juggle just like with not just two people but imagine with four, three people like with if like one guy's in a polyamorous relationship with three women or even four that's a lot i mean women are beautiful in their own right and powerful as well but when it comes to juggling all those kind of people just really you know it's hard it's hard to just really you know being present with them too especially if you're going through stuff if they're just like if they're you know going through life they're having their ups and downs with life also it's really hard just being present with each and every one of them too that's why i can you know see the downside of polyamory too when it comes to that you know and with monogamy too that's like the cool thing about that is just you can really just be fully present with your partner and just really you know doing that as well too so even like if it's like vice versa too if it's one woman you know she's just like has like multiple boyfriends too like i see like around four you know that's really tough also because you know guys are very you know territorial when it comes to what their partners do in a very health especially in a healthy way too and in some ways unhealthy as well so it's kind of like they want to make sure their partner is okay that you know they just want to make sure they're secure too and it's just like you know if they're in a polyamorous relationship too if one wants sex one wants intimacy one wants intimacy and sex i mean that's a lot to juggle because you know things people's emotions change if women especially if we're you know around them too so yeah you know definitely teal hit the spot on this one too so yes what you said is spot on and if you guys disagree with about teal what i'm sharing what teal's sharing too if you guys agree as well just feel free to share your feelings and thoughts and then in the comment section too so just as long as it's respectful too you know so if you're talking just talking shit about me too you know obviously you're gonna get blocked so i'm just gonna let you know about that as well but if you guys have you know disagree and if you want to agree agreements or disagreements too that's totally cool with me too we can always have a discussion about that so anyways here we go we need that we're gonna get back into the video you're juggling multiple people and their feelings and needs being polyamorous comes with community drama mm. most polyamorous dynamics are full of gossip and complex relational behaviors it can increase mm. the potential for conflict on top of this one element of complexity that is often overlooked is that in most polyamorous arrangements everyone in a polycule is in some kind of relationship with each other this means that you can't just break up with a partner and go your separate ways they have a close mm. and yeah breakups you know and especially nowadays too sometimes they get really ugly real quick because you know some people can really get jealous some people will feel a certain way and it's just like you know especially if you're dealing with the ugly breakup too i mean damn that's a, like a recipe for just like uh ooh, recipe for disaster i don't want to just you know be a debbie downer when it comes to that too so um yeah i mean it's just like if you um if things don't work out with one person i mean it's just like you have another person too to go along with it i mean that can really hurt the, the other person's you know feelings too when it comes to that just moving on so quickly because sometimes we need a time for ourselves to just heal and to just you know to really just heal from our past relationships too to really just let that go to really make space for us to just learn from that to grow and make space for new people too and just jumping from one person to the next so quickly can be kind of unhealthy too in ways so i mean i can be totally wrong about this too so if i'm wrong about it too feel free to share your feelings and thoughts in the chat if i'm right I, same thing too so definitely relationship with everyone else so you will be around them and you will see them whether you like it or not mm -hmm. and setting a boundary not to puts everyone else in the situation in the middle and in a difficult situation complexity can either be life enriching or crushing pressure depending on the many different factors of your life if you want the benefits of polyamory it will come with the downsides of drama and mm -hmm. complexity yeah. five the polyamory community is full of amazing people who are masters of relationship but guess what it's also full of people who are superbly relationally dysfunctional and who use non-monogamy mm. as a way to be able to live their dysfunctionality rather than to change it for example people who want to take zero responsibility for another person's needs and feelings can gravitate towards a polyamorous lifestyle because they feel they can have relationships without being relied on and people with an avoidant attachment style 
can gravitate towards polyamorous lifestyles because they can more easily avoid those feelings of enmeshment. Yeah, that's true. And especially, you know, you know, with me, you know, um, practicing, I mean, I say practicing, but just really doing some research about these kind of relationships too. I don't want to be the kind of the man that's just really avoiding and just like when it comes to just you knowing other people feelings too. I'm very empathetic. I try to practice that on a regular basis, being a good listener and all that stuff too. And it's just like people who are kind of have the avoidant kind of personality in their relationships too. It kind of Clearly, to be damaging, also, just like if you don't want to deal with certain, like certain people, you just go to the next one and the next one. That could be really, just really unhealthy too. So, I mean, that just share my own, you know, um, opinions about it too. So you guys could disagree however you want, but it's just like you know when it comes to just like you know, just like you know how people do that too. It's just especially. If you like you had an argument with your one partner, then you go to the next one just to really, you know, get away from them. I mean, I don't want to do that to someone too, because I learned from the past too. I did that before when I was younger, dating other women too. And, you know, I admit that I made some mistakes too, but I learned from it too. And it made me the person who I am today too. So when it comes to that, and, you know, I'm again, I'm just sharing my opinions too. So you guys could totally disagree or agree however you want to in this video and it's just like yeah you know what teal said is pretty spot on so let's get back into it. i'm gonna make sure i'm gonna let her play and see you know what she has to say and people for whom sex is an addiction can gravitate towards a polyamorous lifestyle because they have a potentially endless supply etc mm -hmm. six jealousy and insecurity are serious issues in polyamorous relationships mm -hmm. Some of this, of course, before. is due yeah. to what we make things mean because of our monogamous programming, rather than what it inherently does mean. But the reality is that you will be confronting enhanced issues of jealousy and enhanced issues of relationship insecurity in polyamorous relationships. The normal go-to solutions to creating security and decreasing jealousy in relationships apply only to monogamous relationships, and by definition, oppose the practice of polyamory. Because currently, instead of relying on the quality of the relationship itself and the conduct of the other person or people to derive a sense of security from, people rely on the structure of monogamy itself to be what gives security and helps people avoid jealousy. Seven, the potential of preventing growth and improvement. When we commit mm. to one person, we have the potential to prevent growth and keep each other stuck by simply adapting to and finding ways to cope with the other person's behavior so as to maintain the relationship no matter how dysfunctional, right? Longevity is not necessarily an indication of a healthy relationship, but it can actually work the other way as well. We also have the potential to grow and become more and to involve and improve together because the relationship requires that we do so in order to stay together. If we just bounce out, the minute that things get hard, the path of growth and change does not occur. Mm, Even if we aren't necessarily right. bouncing out, but instead just simply are adding someone else, we may be preventing that growth by doing so. For example, in a monogamous relationship, let's imagine that one person is emotionally unavailable. They may need to work to become emotionally available. This may be something that greatly benefits their life and causes the relationship to become deeper and closer and better. But if you simply add an additional partner who is emotionally available from the get-go, that growth and depth in the relationship, that original relationship, may never occur. Eight, a serious lack of assistance for relationship problems. For polyamorous people, there is a shortage, if not a total absence, of role models. There are hardly any relationship therapists that are, in fact, trained to deal with poly relationships and all of those dynamics. And so most traditional relationship advice literally does not apply. Almost every book that offers solutions for relationships is about monogamous relationships only, and the likelihood of getting shamed and discouraged from your polyamorous lifestyle when you do seek help is very, very high. So what this can lead to is this feeling of being the first to face a problem and of having to sort of piece things together to solve the problem on your own. There's essentially no guardrails for polyamorous relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ain't that Nine, true, depending yeah. on the type polyamory that you're engaged in, sexually transmitted infection is an increased risk. Oh yeah, 
you know, I want to talk about that too, especially, you know, for anyone who likes to explore, you know, their sexuality too, if they're straight, you know, if they like to hook up with, you know, women too, especially, I know, with guys as well, if they're straight. I know we love to look at beautiful women, you know, from afar on a regular basis, even just interacting with them too. And from a healthy space also, just really saying hello, introducing yourself, you know, and just really having, you know, like those discussions with them too, when it comes to getting to know them, going on dates and stuff too. And just like when it comes to sex, you know, because we all like to have a good time when it comes to intimacy, but when it comes to, you know, like in polyamorous relationships too, you know, even with polyamory, it's like, you know, the rate of ha like getting like a STI, you know, or STDs is really high too. So just really, you know, protecting yourself also just really, you know, practicing that using condoms or getting tested as well too. I mean, I try to do that too when it comes to if I, you know, connecting with someone too especially if it's another woman too or if their you know partner is okay with it too looking up with another person because you know in the communities that i was into too i'm just going to share a little bit about it you know they really you know are just really open to dating you know other men from different races especially when it comes to with black men and they really want to do some crazy shit too you know like you know you know, gang bangs and all that crazy shit too. So I'm not sure it's appropriate to say on YouTube, but I'm just gonna keep it keep it real on the buck with you too. When it comes to with these kind of like, you know, with STIs, it's really important to just really getting tested, even people involved too in that kind of polyamorous relationships, getting tested also so they don't have any kind of like infections that'll not only affect their you know your health but also their health too and vice versa so just really you know taking care of ourselves too just really practicing healthy you know sexual activities and everything else and i'm not a doctor too i'm not a sexologist so i can't comment on that too i'm just really advocating for healthy sex and healthy intimacy too with you know it's just like with one-on-one -on -one with another woman or multiple people too just really doing that from a healthy space basically and just really you know getting tested and you know, for guys too, especially, you know, put a rubber on it too. So when it comes to that, you know, just really doing that from, you know, a healthy space, especially with brothers out there too, who like to just, you know, hook up with white women, who like to hook up with sisters, you know, beautiful black women too, or with Brazilian or Mexican or Cuban, you know, Colombian, or just like, you know, you know, they're from Japan or from Thailand, from, you know, China too, from Russia, just really, or from Italy too. I mean, I've, you know, been with a beautiful Italian woman, even though things didn't work out. I'm not going to share my business out there. But, you know, just really, you know, practicing healthy, safe sex is really important, especially if you want to, you know, if you're a man, you know, just really running a rubber. And with women, too, just really doing that from a healthy space, too. I can't comment on the women because I'm not a woman. I have the right to do so. But with men, too, especially when it comes to black men, because I am a man, obviously. And it's in just like, you know, really wearing a rubber, you know, can really help with that too. There's always latex free ones and just really getting tested too, especially if you're a man or a woman too, it can really just be beneficial and anyone involved too, just really getting tested too for STIs, STDs, all that stuff too. So yeah, definitely. I agree with you on that too, with this. As is dealing with the fact that your sexual choices impact many people, not mm -hmm. just one. And every person involved will have their own opinions and boundaries about it, making it quite complicated. 10. It is very easy to get stuck only socializing with your polycule. There's only so much time, and with multiple partners, each person needs some of that time. You can easily feel, let's say, maxed out socially with solely your polycule. With the complexity as well, it is also easy to find yourself only spending time with those people and not expanding your social sphere. And this can also mean you end up with no monogamous people in your social network. 11. Yeah. If the polyamorous arrangement isn't a closed loop dynamic, it's very easy for energy and resources and value to be added to a person or to a relationship and to have it not come back in a beneficial energy exchange, but rather for that energy and those resources and that value to be given to someone else. For example, a person might pour themselves into really being there for one of their partners, only to have that person pour their energy into being there not for them, for another one of their partners. This can easily create a self-serving setup where a person just takes. It can also create a setup where the energy exchange element in a relationship goes away. 
because there's a resource and energy bleed. And in the lack of a good energy exchange, ultimately a relationship dissolves. And now let's look at some of the main upsides or gifts of polyamory. Oh, okay. One, polyamory is a more natural relational style for a physical human. But the structure of society has been set up completely around monogamy and the nuclear family, and people have been intensely programmed for that new structure. People born into society simply assume that society was set up this way because it's what's natural for people when it isn't. Hmm. You know, I don't have any information about that too, but if anyone does too, when it comes to, kind of like with societies that are way older than America's history too, I mean, in African cultures also, there have been very, you know, um, tribes that practice polyamorous relationships too. So like when it comes to that, you know, um, I have no information about that too. If you guys do, if you guys want to share that as well, you're more than welcome to share it in the comment section too, you know, when it comes to that. And it's just like, you know, when it comes to that, I, when it comes to the history of polyamory, I don't have the information about it, but if, if you guys do, any, even if you guys are experts too in that field as well, to studying with relationships, if you're a sexologist or if you've just been studying about polyamory, polyamorous relationships and history too with other cultures, you know, especially like in before, you know, the Western cultures like America, UK and all that too. Just feel free to share your links, you know, your sort of, you know, some sort I mean, those, you know, what's, a, I say credited links too. I don't know how people say it nowadays too. So when it comes to those links that are just have some valuable, I mean, valid proof of that too, you're more than welcome to share that too in the comic set, comment section below too. Did I say it right? Comment section. So in a comment section below too. So <laughs> when I say comment, you know, it sounds like I'm saying comment. <laughs> oh shit. I don't know. I got to get my words right. But anyways, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to let Teal finish the upsides of polyamory. I won't say much about this one too. So here we go. But really, their wires have been crossed. And this causes what is natural to feel unnatural. When we switched from a foraging lifestyle to an agrarian lifestyle and property ownership became the most important thing, the structure of society changed and with it, our relationship practices. We are now completely programmed against polyamory and you can't just undo this programming overnight. This yeah. programming makes what is natural feel bad to a person, but programming aside, okay, when a being lives in alignment with what is natural to them, their well-being increases. Two, more resources, added support. People in today's world are severely under-resourced. They've become more and more separate from each other and have gotten further away from the tribal structure or community structure which is natural to them. The mm. problem with this is that one person cannot reliably provide all the needs that you have from other people. And that's, she's right about that. I mean, because, you know, like one person, I mean, it's possible. Like we want, like if you're in a monogamous relationship, we can all get our needs too when it comes to being with that kind of, you know, one partner as well when it comes to dynamic. But when it comes to human nature, because, you know, especially with men too, I'm just really keeping it real in the butt with you guys too. We like to, you know, explore we like to look you know especially when it comes to with you know interacting with people too especially if we're you know inner hero i say you know straight men too so i mean i'm guilty of this also i mean i never like cheat on a partner too and i just you know if i did i'll be be accountable of that too with my actions but i like to look at you know beautiful women i mean if it's a beautiful woman i mean when it comes to just interacting with them i'll just keep my distance and to say, you know, oh my gosh, that's a beautiful woman there too. So when it comes to that, I mean, especially if you're like at a beach or if you're in a club or if you're at the gym, especially to, you know, the gym junkies, you know, I'm talking about you guys, you know, saying that respectfully, you know, especially the ones that, you know, you see those beautiful women, they have like the yoga pants on, the sneakers, they got the matching outfits, they're coordinating like John Witherspoon said too. So when it comes to that, I mean, Hey, I'm guilty of that too, but when it comes to that as well, as well, um, just talking about, you know, when it comes to with, you know, um, not everyone can meet your needs. And that's a true to a sense also, just because it's like, you know, 
sometimes you know people in polyamorous relationships go to someone just for their sexual you know desires and needs other people go to other people just for their intimacy needs too if they don't want to just like in that stage of their lives just want to have sex all the time they probably feel burnt out about it and you just want someone to talk to to hang out you know throw cards oracle cards or just like play you know Grand Theft Auto online or Tekken or Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh whatever that name is too it's just it could go various ways when it comes to with polyamorous relationships it doesn't have to be related to just with sex and that's gonna be a really good thing too just because if you're really honest with you know your partners too in a polyamorous relationship and you're just like hey just really being up front too and you know the late great Alan Roger Curry and you know you know many blessings to him you know god rest his soul too and you know when it comes to that he really just mentioned when it comes to with your desires and goals especially when it comes to relationships just really being mode one just really being honest to what you desire when it comes to hooking up with another person especially when it comes to the opposite sex and not lie about it too if they really feel a certain way about it too so read it you know but it's kind of like you know just really getting your point across and especially when it comes to with your desires and goals also it's just like hey you know i just really want to just you know hook up with you for you know just for a good time you know and just really you know sexually too and especially if you have like i say you know sexual compatibility with the person that you are interacting with too just really being straight up with them too and just not lie about them in their face and so even if it's just like if you're looking for something just like say you know in the romantic sense too it's like hey I'm not here just to really random hook up. I want to just date, get to know you, build a family, have some kids, you know, you know, and just really grow with them too. Just really being honest and real with, you know, with ourselves too. And just really being bold and just really, you know, to what you really desire. And just really, you know, when it comes to with other people too. So that's what I learned from, you know, with Alan Roger Curry. I might have to reread his book just to really get the you know, point across to you when it comes to that. But God bless that man too, Alan Roger Curdy. Shout out to him too when it comes to mode one with this book as well. And I'll probably link to, you know, when it comes to with his book also. So if you guys ever want to buy, you know, his books also too with mode one, you're more than welcome to do so too. You know, it's a really good book, really good read, and just really, you know, you know, just really, you know, enjoy it for yourself too if you ever want to explore that. So, um, yeah. Um, I'm going to get back into it too when it comes to Atil and what she said is really spot on too when it comes to not everyone fulfilling your needs but it can be possible that someone can do that just because in their fear and their monogamous relationship and they really feel comfortable with themselves with their partner and they don't want to desire any other kind of people too when it comes to that you know especially if it's like with you know you don't want to see no other women or another men also that's cool but sometimes with human nature because we are very curious creatures by nature it's like oh you know i want to explore that you know and do other things too so we're curious by nature too when it comes to human beings and you know teal's has a really good point here too so i'll just leave it at that so let's get back into it here we go one person cannot offer us all the resources that multiple people can or the tribe once offered to us when you include more people in your life naturally you have more resources. Mm. You have more people to solve a problem. You have more people to help out. You have more people to That's meet any point. one specific That's need you might have. You have more of a guarantee of availability. You have access to and support from people with varied skills. You end up more satiated, less having to fend for yourself, and in many ways more secure regarding your needs being met. Three, polyamory affords much more freedom. The restrictions that monogamous relationships require a person to comply to no longer reign supreme, and there is room for creative arrangements that accommodate for each person's unique personality and needs and desires and strengths and weaknesses. Four, the pressure on each person in the relationship goes down. There is more space for potential incompatibilities as well as bad days. This goes hand in hand with the last point, but in a monogamous relationship arrangement, quite often a person's one partner becomes their only source of security and their only source from which to get their needs met. This means if there are any relationship ruptures of any kind with that one person, 
or, you know, God forbid that person becomes ill or dies, suddenly we lose all of our sense of security in life and we are suddenly starved for our needs. Most of us live our lives in red zone level insecurity because of this. We are under-resourced and many of us are, let's say, chronically anxious in our relationships and in the world. Mm -hmm. We become desperate and furious with our partner when he or she can't reliably be there for us in the exact way that we yeah. need them to be. This means we put a lot of pressure on our monogamous partner. When a person has multiple partners... And that pressure can be very overwhelming too when it comes to that, you know, because, you know, that pressure, it can really just makes us feel anxious, especially if someone who experiences, you know, high levels of anxiousness too, when it comes to, you know, you know, with that also, I mean, Teal has a point there too. And it's just like, you know, with, you know, monogamous relationships too, especially when it comes to, you know, relying on your partner to just really doing everything for you too, you know, it's just like, you know, it's possible that that can happen, but at the same time, you know, we're human too. So we, we're not like Superman, we're not kal we're not Kakarot, we're not Hercules, we can't do everything too, we're not perfect. And sometimes we'll make mistakes along the way too. So it's just really, it was really good to just really acknowledge that from a healthy space as well, especially if you want to just like, you know, even if you want to get into any kind of polyamorous relationships too, or a monogamous one too. So I'll just leave it at that. You know, I'm just sharing my opinions about it too. You guys could agree or disagree too in the comment section. So, yeah. There's that red zone panic tends to go down because they're experiencing more abundance relative to their needs being met and thus feel more secure in that way. And because of this, there is much less pressure on the people in their life because of it. More room for bad days to happen without a compromise in the relationship much more room for finding truly creative arrangements that accommodate for incompatibilities that would make a monogamous relationship arrangement impossible. Five, polyamory is an absolute recipe for personal growth. Having multiple partners will force the exposure of your shadows, of your blind spots, of all your relationship baggage. It will force you to become good at communicating. It will force you to become aware. It will force you to master relationship skills. It will force you to define yourself. It is an aggressive path of growth and self-development. Mm -hmm. Six, the potential for an enhanced mm -hmm. sense of security in life and in relationships. We've discussed how polyamory threatens security, but it can also work the other way as well. Think of how much more secure you would feel in life if you felt like you had a secure attachment to multiple people rather than to just one. And if you felt like there were many people committed to being there for you when you needed them rather than just one. To get a felt perception of this, imagine that you were a child growing up in a tribe and try to feel the security of knowing that if this person wasn't providing a sense of deep understanding, that person was. Or if this person wasn't providing protection, that person was. And if multiple people were there to provide the same thing, you would simply feel more of an abundance of that thing, and therefore less and less and less insecurity about it. Though polyamory challenges our sense of stability and security, it also has the potential to make us far more stable and far more secure. Seven, people can be truly accepted and appreciated for what they are rather than end up in pain because of what they're not. In monogamous relationships, all the focus is on finding Mr. or Mrs. Right, someone who checks all the boxes. There's a great pressure to get a person to change to be what you want them to be. A great many people will be fabulous partners in one way and terrible partners in another causing a person who's looking for a monogamous partner to write them off. But with polyamory, you can be with one person who is a fabulous partner in one way and another that is a fabulous partner in a different way. This opens the door for opportunity to enjoy someone because of what they are, rather than to suffer mm. because of what they are not. Right. It also prevents all people involved from falling into the trap of trying to be something that they aren't. Mm, and from, that's a good point there. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah, definitely. From that all too common negative self-esteem spiral that happens when you are not what someone wants or needs you to be. Eight, dynamic relationships that do not become stuck or stale. To generalize in polyamorous relationships, people are consistently reappraising the relationships 
and people are much more honest with each other. They're constantly working on things to make their relationships better. There's less coping going on and more proactive action to make changes in the relationship. Things do not, let's say, fester unresolved in the way that they do in a monogamous relationship. Nine, way less assumptions, way more clear agreements. In monogamous relationships, people assume. They assume that they're on the same page with their partner and that they have the same vision as their partner and the same rules and boundaries and ideas of what's okay and not okay and what should happen as their partner does. Um, this results in disaster. In polyamorous relationships, rather than assuming, there is a lot of communication going on to get on the same page, lots of negotiating to establish clear and mutually agreed upon guidelines and boundaries so that all people involved can coexist in a mutually pleasing way, mm -hmm. because a polyamorous lifestyle literally requires that. 10. Relationships that are based off of expanded love and inclusion. It is actually unhealthy that people's definition of love revolves around excluding others. And it is not true mm. that love is a finite resource to divide up rather than one that can grow and grow. Polyamorous relationships don't operate according to the mentality of exclusion or scarcity around love and caring. In polyamorous relationships, love is not treated as a zero-sum resource, even if time and certain other resources are. 11. Expanded opportunities. Each relationship, especially each partnership, is a kind of opportunity for new and different things. Things like new and different resources, new and different things to learn, new and different experiences, etc. In monogamous relationships, people limit and cut off those opportunities for the sake of their primary relationship. A polyamorous lifestyle makes it so that you can take many more opportunities. Opportunities that may prove incredible for all people involved, not only you. It would be a wonderful thing if polyamory did not come with contrast. Alas, contrast is a fundamental part of this time-space reality. This means monogamy comes with gifts and challenges, and polyamory comes with gifts and challenges. Yep. And so it is important facts. to look directly at Straight that contrast right so that you can choose what is truly right for you. Have a good week. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Teal Swan, you beautiful, beautiful, beautiful woman. So, <laughs> I'm Thurston, I know, when it comes to Teal Swan, but hey, I can't help it. She's got the beautiful cheekbones. She kind of looks like Xena, the warrior princess, Lucy Lawless is you know, uh, twin daughter or something, <laughs> but hey, you know, it is what it is. I got my preference and I respect you guys' preference too. So hey, if you guys talk shit about my preference, you know, you're trying to attack my character, you're going to go to Band City. So, you know, not just Smackdown Hotel, but Band City. But if you guys disagree about what I was said too, or if you agree about what Teal said and what I'm sharing too, you're more than welcome to share your own feelings and thoughts in the uh, comment section too so when it comes to with this video as well much love to all you guys who are watching this too so i'll make sure to not only to just um to share um the original video too that we reacted to with this video but also the previous steel spawn video that i did as well so if you guys want to check that out also especially with alan rogers curry's book too when it comes to mode one if you want to learn more about how to practice healthy communication when it comes to your with your desires and with your goals too when it comes to you know being in relationships and interacting with people too as well i'll link to that as well too if you want to check that out you know um just supporting the adam roger curry family too you know doing that respectfully and i'm going to take a sip real quick before i end the video and yeah, much love to you guys. You know, much love to Teal Swan, to Alan Roger Curry, rest in power, you know, brother. So miss you every day. I mean, it's, it sucks he's not here with us no more. I love his content. Used to listen to him, his podcast every single week too. In 2017, especially, I was just like walking up and down from my apartment to the gym, just listening to his stuff. It was just really mind blowing and life changing too. So when it comes to that um yeah i thank you guys for watching this video too if you guys liked what i'm talking about if you guys agree or disagree too but you still want to support my channel as well feel free to you know give this live stream a like share with your friends if you guys want to subscribe to my self-care and wellness channel too you're more than welcome to do so just make sure to hit the notification bell also too so that way you'll get notified for not only with these kind of videos too but with you know, live streams and short videos and posts that I do on this channel.
on a regular basis and much love to all you guys who are watching this and i'll see you guys you know next time so stay safe stay healthy you know practice healthy relationships communications and all that stuff to you guys you know when it comes to that as well i just want to share that you know out of love and respect too but um yeah maybe continue to practice self-care that could not only benefit ourselves as well but our loved ones and our whole environment too when it comes to our communities and our beautiful planet as well and i'll see you guys around so much love and you guys take care don't say